So it's time to answer the question that everyone's been wondering about. No, not why does Yuki Tsunoda swear so much on team radio. I can't believe this car. Or why Nikita Mazepin has to learn blue flags. It's different. Do you always have to have the fastest car to be a world champion in Formula 1? Looking back to one of my first memories of Formula 1 was the infamous 2002 Austrian Grand Prix when Rubens Barrichello leading the race was ordered to let Michael Schumacher pass which would have allowed Michael Schumacher to take the win. But Rubens Barrichello comes through, he's not going to let Michael through is he? No they're going to, yes he is! I do not believe it! This was so important because Ferrari did Barrichello dirty the previous year by pulling exactly the same move. Last lap, let Michael pass for the championship. Let Michael pass for the championship. Awkward. And more importantly, Ferrari was seen as having the best car and Schumacher would have won the championship at some point anyway. And this is very similar to something that we are used to hearing, that it's the fastest car that allowed Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel, etc. to become multiple world champions. It's the done thing. It led me to realise that although having a fast car is important, there are a number of years in this DHL data where the driver who set the highest number of fastest laps in that year didn't win the driver's championship. This led me to come up with this video where you could argue that you don't have to be driving the quickest car to win the championship but who are these drivers that have driven beyond the car that you could say wasn't actually the fastest car that year i wasn't even sure if i should do this video but when in doubt just send it welcome to the racing house my name is saki and keep watching to find out those drivers that may not have been driving the fastest car but still went on to secure driver's title Before we get started, if you're new to our videos or you haven't subscribed before, please hit the subscribe button, it really does help our channel out. So let's get going. For me, being able to set the fastest lap consistently over a season, one driver or both drivers from that team means a lot. It's one record that's not really looked at too much, so I had to look at this data. Yes, I did go through every season for the past 30 years to check. So this first year goes back to 1991 and it does provide some pretty juicy data. The winner that year was Ayrton Senna, who secured eight poles, seven wins but only two fastest laps throughout the season and surprisingly the driver with the highest number of fastest laps was Nigel Mansell driving in the Williams securing six of the fastest laps that season. So a clear example there that Senna maybe didn't have the fastest car that season and drove well beyond the car to secure the 1991 title. And then we get onto the year 2000 and 2001 where we saw Michael Schumacher secure driver's titles. But there were other cars that set more fastest laps in both of those years. In 2000 Mika Hakkinen was the DHL fastest lap winner and the McLaren was the car to be in apparently taking 12 fastest laps versus the five fastest laps set by Ferraris. And then in 2001 we saw Williams take the fastest lap title with Ralph Schumacher taking the award and Williams taking eight out of the fastest laps that season versus the three fastest laps set by Ferraris. For a few years we saw some Ferrari dominance and then in 2005 and 2006 we get some juicy results and data. Fernando Alonso won the championships but by the looks of it he didn't have the fastest fastest car. In 2005, the McLarens looked incredibly quick, taking 12 fastest laps that year with Kimi Raikkonen leading the way compared to the two of Alonso. And then in 2006, Michael Schumacher and the Ferraris seemed to be very fast, taking nine fastest laps compared to the five of Fernando Alonso. So dialing up to 2008 and the first year that caught my attention and made me want to do this video in the first place. We had Ferraris take the fastest lap on 12 occasions, which makes it look like the Ferrari were the fastest despite Lewis Hamilton winning the championship championship that season. Those are the most obvious ones but there are some years that I looked at and saw that there wasn't a clear and obvious fastest car which made these seasons some of the most competitive we have ever seen. Dialing back to 1994 this is an example where the winner Michael Schumacher didn't have the car that was outright fastest. It was on par with its rival securing six wins and eight fastest laps but it could be argued that the Williams had an equally quick car securing eight fastest laps during that season but split between the drivers. So a potential example example where the winner had an equally good car. Dial it back to 2007, Ferrari did set the highest number of fast laps that season but quite interestingly Felipe Massa and Kimi Raikkonen set an equal amount of fast laps which just makes me wonder if Massa had more missed opportunities to win a championship than I remember. Dial it back to 2009, in 09 the infamous year that Braun GP shocked the world but interestingly they weren't as dominant as I remember. Red Bull were very strong as the season went on securing the most fastest laps that year but 
it wasn't quite enough for them to beat Braun after that amazing start. We've got 2010 where Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton set the highest number of fast laps as a driver. The Red Bull and McLaren cars were the fastest cars as a collective and then Sebastian Vettel ended up winning the championship. So very mixed. Realistically this is one data point and isn't the definitive way to decide which car is fastest but for me it's a huge indicator especially given up until recently there was no real incentive to set the fastest lap for the sake of a record that could end up just compromising your race. And I'm pretty much ignoring the fact that Mercedes in recent years have been so dominant it is pretty hard to come close to them but in years to come it does give me hope that if the quality of cars are brought closer together then we will see some more varied podiums each year and new world champions. There are other factors that could come into play, fuel loads, use of tyres, one lap wonders etc etc but for now I just wanted to have a quick look at this DHL data because it really did catch my eye and it's not something that people really talk about. Please do let me know in the comment section what other factors could come into play. I really do want to get your opinions on this. But that just about finishes off the video about the drivers who may not have been driving the fastest car but still went on to secure a driver's title which I hope you've enjoyed. Until next time everyone, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to ensure that you get all my latest videos.